three more days of school, so. We came out of a closed session at 7.31. With no reportable action, we gave direction to staff. We have a... Uh, <laughs> Recording in progress. Shall I start over? Uh, no, why don't you just start with uh, the whole top part there? All right. Attention. This will be a virtual meeting of the Marinwood CSD Board of Directors pursuant to Executive Order N2920 issued by the Governor of the State of California. There will not be a public location for participating in this meeting. Any interested member of the public can participate telephonically or via internet by utilizing the web link or dial in information printed on this agenda. At points in the meeting, when the meeting <clears throat> chair requests public comment, members of the public participating in the live meeting, either via internet or telephone, shall indicate their desire to speak. If participating via internet, please click the raise hand feature located within the Zoom application screen. If connected via telephone, please dial star nine. Also, members of the public are reminded to adhere to the three minute time limit for public comment on both non-agenda items and agenda items. To aid in this, a three minute timer will begin and be displayed during each public comment. If the speaker has not concluded their comment at the end of the three minute time period, they will be asked to conclude their comment. After having requested the speaker conclude their comment, the chair may elect to end the comment period for the individual commenter. Yay. Okay. And then, uh, Bill, if I can interrupt for one second before you uh, go to the agenda uh, question, can you just ask if there is, uh, I mean, that recap for the record um, coming out of closed session. I thought I did. It wasn't recorded. I know, but let's do it again. Okay. So we directed staff uh, and we had no reportable action. Is that good enough? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, okay. I guess we should start with the consent calendar. Uh, or the agenda. Um, if there's any changes to the agenda, any you haven't adopted to the that. Agenda. Oh, open session agenda. Sorry, I missed that. <laughs> and then Chris, this would be where if you wanted to uh, suggest moving up the fire department matters, uh, this would be the time to do it. I, I don't know that we have anything to, you know, quote unquote, hang it up or other people uh, specific on any of these other items, but uh, this would be the time to make that suggestion. Just right, right, right. Reference. Um, I'm just saying we, we made Chief White stick around so long last time. I, I would propose that we move uh, the fire matters to the front, but only if, only if he wants that. I know you also mentioned, Chief, that you like to hear some of the things that are going on. Uh, Director Case, I, I sure appreciate the offer, um, but I, I, it's, this isn't a great opportunity for me to learn and, and see what's going on in the Marinwood community. So I would uh, respectfully decline and uh, opt to choose to join and just stay where I am in the agenda tonight, if, if you don't mind. But I certainly appreciate your, your support and consideration. Thank you so much. Absolutely, perfect. We'll, we'll try to move things along a little quicker this time. Uh, if there's no other, we'll adopt the agenda. Uh, the consent calendar. Any comments on the consent calendar? Hearing none, uh, I'll open that up to the public. Yeah, one second, please, Bill. Good evening, everybody. Um, Stephen, actually, um, uh, if you notice on your agenda, Part B is public comment on closed session items. You didn't allow comment on the, the last few items. 
and I did want to make actually, that clear. We, we actually, actually you're, you're interrupting. You're taking away from my seven. time, so please add to my time. You're being um, uh, very difficult as far as commu communication. Um, I want to respect you, and I expect you to re uh, respect my time. Thank you. I will continue. The public uh, comment on closed session items. You know, we get a lot of closed sessions, and we don't get any information. The report is always, we directed, there were no actions, we directed staff to do our bidding. Now, there are categories where that is completely acceptable. I believe um, it has to do with labor negotiations and uh, leases and certain other items. But as far as matters of public business, for example, um, challenges you may be having uh, with the uh, parks project. That is not a closed session item. That is an open session item. And um, I, you know, we're taking on faith that you're respecting the rules, but um, the fact that we never get any more detail out of these closed sessions until after uh, things have happened or actually not even after uh, things have happened is, is quite frustrating. Okay, that concludes my comment on uh, the closed session. As far as um, the uh, bills paid, which I also have another three minutes uh, on, and as well as the agenda, um, uh, I, I'd like to make the following comments. Um, the, uh, the bills paid I, I'm very, very concerned about uh, how fast and readily we're spending money uh, in the district, and it seems like uh, we have uh, you've taken a credit card uh, uh, from the taxpayers and are really spending quite irresponsibly, uh, and you will be sticking the, the public with the bill. and. Um, I just think that uh, as far as trimming expenses, let's see more what we can do. Um, I'm concerned with, uh, especially with the uh, interruptions of service uh, uh, concerning COVID, that we're spending a lot in certain areas and really not delivering the services that are historically have been a part of uh, Marinwood CSD. I'll have more to say about that later. Um, and as far as the agenda is concerned, I don't know why it is that we can put forth, we put forth uh, ideas as far as the future of this district, which really, this is what these meetings are about, how we're going to govern um, the vision of Marinwood in the future. I don't know why that never gets uh, talked about. Um, it's very frustrating. I hear a lot of huffs and puffs from certain individuals on the board and really n no real dialogue. And um, that is really what uh, uh, democracy is about, is, is di dialogue, sorting out ideas and getting things done. Um, you know, uh, there ha we do have some issues uh, with, with the park as far as accessibility. There's no, been no discussions on that. We have uh, problems. This is a consent calendar. Can you shut him up? Uh, you know what, uh, Bill? No, Stephen. Bill, you need to you you need to grow up. Okay, stop no, bullying me around. You need to talk about the subject matter at hand. That no business this is, talking I was about talking the about session. the agenda, Bill. You skipped no, over you three, weren't. three opportunities. You're rambling again, Stephen. Uh, uh, okay, Bill. I just put put fingers in your ears when I talk then, because I assume uh, four other people plus the staff would like to hear uh, uh, from the public and actually work on solutions as opposed to. Just being We're talking plug. about the consent. I was calendar. talking about the agenda. You did not listen. I'm sorry, right. Bill. I, I I don't have anything more to say. Um, hopefully, we can get this back on.
Is there anybody else, Eric? Uh, no, not on the consent calendar, but can I just make a point of clarification? Uh, public comment on closed session items happens before the closed session. The uh, meeting was opened to the public prior to closed session at 6.30 when uh, the meeting was called to order. There was no members of the public present at that time. Therefore, there was no comment on public uh, or on the public comment on closed session item. But technically, it was made available prior to the board going into closed session. I guess we can go on to public comment. <clears throat> no, you need a vote on the consent bill. Oh, God. Can I make a motion to approve the consent calendar and for the draft minutes of the regular meeting on May 11th, the draft minutes of the special meeting on May 24th, and the bills paid? I'll second. That's me, Tiffany. Thank you. I'll take a vote. Board President Shea? Aye. Director Case? Aye. Director Kilkenny? Aye. Director Oysterman? Aye. Director Ruggieri? Aye. Thanks. Let's go to F. Public comment, open time for items not on the agenda. One second, please. Steven. Okay. Uh, I did have an opportunity to talk on the agenda. You simply ignored it. Uh, I would also like to point out to Eric that commenting before a, a meeting does not make sense. I was commenting on the report of the meeting that, that was, was given. I would also ask the board to really consider the lack of civility by uh, President uh, Bill Shea it is creates conflict where there doesn't need to be any conflict and uh, you know quite frankly it's irrelevant we can all be adults here we all should be adults here now as far as my comment is concerned um, I'm really concerned about uh, the lack of accessibility I did discover and, and sent a note to several of you uh, regarding the accessibility or the lack of accessibility in our playground structures, it w wasn't uh, noted in the uh, 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 PNR commission, um, but they're in violation uh, and need to be upgraded. Um, the access for the quiet wood, uh, uh, the quiet wood uh, walk path is still a problem, and uh, if you doubt it. We'll put you in a wheelchair at the top of the, the uh, entrance and we'll push you down. And um, when you dig yourself out of the bushes, you can get back in the wheelchair and wheel yourself back up. That's basically what you're asking someone of limited nobil uh, mobility. We all have a friend who lives on Miller Creek Avenue who had just uh, uh, develop is now going to be bound to a wheelchair probably for his remaining days for him to access the park he will need, need to go down most of quiet wood drive uh, to get to the flat section where he can enjoy uh, nature let's just get this fixed properly guys it's not a big deal it won't cost a lot of money it's moral and it's the right thing to do and possibly it's the legal thing to do as well. I'm not 100% certain. But we need access, uh, accessibility for the mobility impaired in Marinwood Park. And those, uh, uh, that is being completely ignored. And I, I got to believe it's because of petty uh, differences between uh, uh, some of us who are promoting uh, accessibility and uh, old members of the board. Let's stop it. Thank you, Stephen. Is there anybody else there? No, sir. Okay, let's get on to district matters. We have a resolution 202105 approving a site lease and a lease agreement making certain determination relating thereto 
and authorizing certain others' actions in connection therewith. We're going to approve this. Uh, any discussion? It was quite lengthy, by the way. It was quite lengthy. Uh, I can tell you that I have spoken with the uh, attorney from the firm who sent it to me, representing the lender and the bank. Uh, it's a fairly complex lease. It is also a fairly standard uh, format for this type of a, of a entity. He did provide me a dozen other public agencies who have entered into a similar type of a format. He answered the couple questions that I had. It was also reviewed by our legal counsel who was comfortable with it and didn't have any uh, level of significant red flags other than they too agreed that it seems like an awful lot of language for what is a fairly straightforward transaction, but given what the nature of the transaction was for, uh, they didn't have any reason to uh, suggest pulling it um, okay. and taking it back. So uh, with that said, if there's any specific questions on it, I can certainly answer that. What I will say is it does represent the terms that were approved at the meeting the board conducted on May 24th. Um, and it is uh, consistent with those. So there is nothing different within this agreement. Uh, it's just the nature of how this financing works, but it's the same deal that at the end, of, once it's paid off, financing goes away and uh, this lease agreement then becomes all and void. Okay, anybody? I'm looking for a motion. I motion to approve resolution number 2021-05 approving the site lease and a lease agreement making certain determinations re relating thereof and authorizing certain other actions in connection with it. Second. Okay, any comments from the public? Um, yeah, uh, Lisa, was that you on the second? Yep. Okay, just making sure uh, we've got that right. Yeah. One second, please. Uh, Stephen. One of the great lies in business is it's a standard agreement and other people are doing it. I don't know. Uh, I, I was really quite surprised when I saw this. It seems to me that uh, uh, I, I guess what it's doing is providing them with an equitable, equitable interest in our property. Uh, I think that goes a little further than uh, what this uh, financing was uh, originally intended uh, to cover. It, does, it, see, it seems like we're potentially um, tying our hands. Uh, for the benefit of the lender, and I'm just wondering why our balance sheet isn't uh, uh, strong enough on its own without uh, resorting to uh, uh, giving up equity, uh, an equitable interest in the park that belongs to all of us, that belongs to the public. Um, Eric said it, it was cleared with uh, council. Um, Okay, I mean, honestly, I, I do have a background in real estate, but I didn't go through it all. It, it was quite detailed, and I don't know all the ins and outs of it. It does make me concerned looking at it, um, and the fact that you've spent so little time uh, in analysis really, really makes me very nervous on this. So I guess you're going to vote for it, you know. Um, you're going to probably spend all the money. Um, you never considered uh, lower cost alternatives to this this project, um, and it will. The community is going to pay very dearly for the lack of uh, of oversight on this project um, and inexperience uh, of uh, of certain individuals. Um, just remember, you, we don't have to buy Ipe at 17 bucks a board foot. We can buy cedar at a dollar 70. We're, there's a lot of ways we can reduce costs, and I don't think any of them have been considered 
All you've done is committed to a very, very expensive uh, project. That's all I have to say. Thank, Thank you, Steven. Steven. Shall we, Tiff? Can I make a statement? Or a slash ask a question of Eric real quick? Um, when we financed the community center was a agreement, not the exact agreement in terms of wording and everything, but an agreement like this done in order to finance the community center. Okay, so Eric's saying yes. Yeah. So oh, yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't realize you were asking me that question. Yeah, same yeah. with the uh, with the fire engine. So this is something that the district has done quite a few times in order to help finance. Um, and I just want to make a statement that the board is trying to be financially responsible in how they're doing this and knowing that COVID is still an issue. We have directed the manager to take out a loan so that we have extra cash on hand. And this is why this agreement is occurring is because we are trying to be financially responsible and taking care of the district and not being willy nilly. So yes, let's go ahead and vote. Go ahead. Ready to go. Awesome. Board President Shea. Aye. Director Case. Aye. Director Kilkenny. Aye. Thank you. Director Oysterman. Aye. And Director Ruggieri. Aye. Thanks. On to a resolution number 2021 06. Determining the 2021-2022 appropriations limit on tax proceeds. Uh, Eric, I believe we do this every year. Yeah, I, I can lead into this a little, little bit. So this is required uh, actually by the Secretary of the Finance, the part of finance. Um, every public agency has to do this. I believe Santa Fels was actually just on their public agenda this week as well for their city council to approve and you do this prior to the fiscal year. All of this data comes directly from the State Department of Finance. To be very clear, this is not an increase in taxes. This does not affect in any way the taxes that are levied. An appropriations limit is something that was passed uh, with Article 13B of the California Constitution that limits how much of tax proceeds a government agency can spend. Those grow on two factors, one being population and one being per capita income, both numbers of which are provided directly by the Department of Finance from the state and then are incorporated into the prior years, at which point uh, you come up with what is your new appropriations limit or more commonly referred to as a spending limit. Again, this does not uh, represent an increase in tax levies to, to residents whatsoever. This is a law within the California Constitution that every government agency must do on an annual basis. Thank you. Any questions? Comments? Comments from the public? Yes, one second. Yes, we do this every year and every year the reminder is the same. But basically this is uh, not how much we should be spending, it's the maximum we should uh, be spending. And uh, um, I think it really it would behoove uh, the board to uh, not look at this as, hey, this is what I have on my credit card, let's spend it all, but to, um, to build a buffer uh, like some communities do that would uh, help us weather uh, the downturns. It's not a given that uh, the real estate prices will always rise, and we do have to um, guard against those uh, down years. Uh, let's let's not let's not 
be foolish about the way that we spend money. Thank you, Stephen. <sighs> Tiff, I guess we're ready. Oh. I don't think I got it. We don't. We didn't get one. I need. <laughs> All right. I hear a motion. I move that we approve resolution number 2106, determining the 2021 2022 appropriations limits on tax proceeds. A second. Thank you. All right. Uh, Board President Shea. Aye. Director Case. Aye. Director Kilkenny. Aye. Director Oysterman. Aye. And Director Ruggieri. Aye. Thanks. And to resolution number three is resolution 2021-07, establishment of banking services with Bank of Marin. Um, Eric, is this is just basically for the Bank of Marin to accept yes. this or? Yes. So what they need is a level of documentation that shows that I actually wrote this resolution. Um, they could have used minutes and just looked at our action minutes, but a resolution is just a cleaner uh, document to have on file. So um, as I explained briefly in my district manager report last time, the, uh, we've been banking, we have a local banking needs where we keep a, a moderate savings account that has some designated funds in it um, related to actually a development project that is yet to occur. Um, and then we also have a local checking account, which is used almost exclusively for payroll distribution purposes because our primary funds are held with the county treasury and running payroll through the county treasury is a uh, very cumbersome process that really no agency does anymore that keeps their money with county treasury. So we have a separate bank account that allows us to do that. And with each payroll, we reimburse ourselves from our treasure fund. Um, and we all know recently with the past I don't know, three or four years, CalPERS has started mandating that certain payments, including pension and health, are made via an electronic fund transfer. So we have increased the amounts uh, in accordance with what those average fund transfer amounts are uh, because they don't accept check anymore. And again, trying to initiate a fund transfer out of our county treasury is a very difficult process when doing it through a local bank is very uh, simple when those fund transfers are made. We reimburse ourselves down to the penny from our general fund via a deposit into a fund transfer deposit into the other bank. Wells Fargo, um, for anybody who knows anything, they certainly don't win points for customer service. Uh, they have constantly been raising our rates. I've had a couple of uh, customer service uh, concerns with them, um, especially within the last year or two. This is something we've been, uh, contemplating for quite a while and finally got to a point when I got the latest rate uh, increase letter from them as well as a uh, another poor customer service experience on a uh, on a uh, claim that I had to file uh, with our account that ultimately I said uh, that's it I am recommending we get out of Wells Fargo we researched other banks and talking to Bank of Marin they can satisfy all of our local banking needs and do it at no monthly annual or uh, set up fees to the district. So we would be able to uh, basically keep our funds there, wouldn't incur fees. They don't have fees for EFT transactions. Um, it would be a very, very moderate interest on the local savings. And when I say that, it's like point something um, is around what their savings, because this isn't a money market, it's not a CD. It's just a, you know kind of a straight savings account. Uh, Bank of Marin does score incredibly high marks in customer service. They also have a division that handles government banking, which not all banks are capable of doing because of government's tax exempt status, as well as other government qualifiers. Uh, the resolution is something that they can have and put on file that shows that uh, when I go in that uh, not only has the board chosen to do this, but they've authorized uh, myself as the district manager to be our authorized representative and signer on the account. 
it's the exact same setup we have currently with Wells Fargo. We won't immediately close the Wells Fargo account, but we will move the majority of our funds, uh, the complete savings account, as well as the vast majority of our checking account over, uh, leaving just enough in there to cover what we have as some outstanding checks. Uh, my intent would be to leave those in there for approximately three months at which point uh, any outstanding checks we still have after that period of time. Um, and we'll certainly let our current employees know, but any outstanding checks that were written up until the point where we stopped writing, uh, all, all of these checks are payroll checks, by the way, any checks after three months, uh, they simply wouldn't be honored and those employees could always come to us and we will uh, make it right for them. But at that point in time, we will fully close our Wells Fargo account probably after the end of Q1, move the remaining funds over to the Bank of Marin account um, and go from there. And working with Tiffany on payroll timing, we're actually looking at doing this probably the very first week of July. We have a payroll that hits on July 2nd. Uh, and this way it doesn't start to have multiple banks within multiple fiscal years we'll be able to open the account with the beginning of next fiscal year, have two accounts for the first quarter at local banks and then close out that after the first quarter. And then for the last three quarters, we'll just have the one local bank account uh, that's obviously subject to, uh, to our audit and everything else. Good. Any discussion, questions? Can I get a motion? And motion to pass the resolution 2021-07 to establish banking services with Bank of New Orleans. Awesome. I'll second. Got it. Uh, any discussion from the public? Uh, yep, one second. I guess I uh, lifted my hand. I actually don't have anything to say except uh, uh, good job, Eric. It looks like uh, you found a better. Thank you. We have Tiff. So, Board President Shea. Here. Director Aye. Case. Aye. Director Kilkenny. Aye. Director Oysterman. Aye. And Director Ruggieri. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, number four, we're looking for approval for fiscal year 2021-2022 publicly available pay schedules of all positions. This again is something that the board has to do every single year prior to the upcoming fiscal year. This is what's known as your publicly available pay schedule. Once approved, it would go on to our website just as the current one is currently on our website. Uh, this is not any level of you know, pushing through wage increases, uh, although to be incredibly transparent, um, as was approved with the budget, uh, it does include the 5% uh, wage increase for the park maintenance position uh, across the board, but that was already uh, essentially approved by the board when it was included and, uh, and disclosed as part of the annual budget approval. Any questions? Comments? Yeah, one second. Um, the, um, uh, first of all, you, you know, it's great that it's, it's going out on the, uh, website, but the really more important, um, reporting is to, I think, uh, uh, Cal salaries. I'm not sure, but, but, uh, I believe that's submitted to a state agency to make the actual, um, salaries available so we can evaluate them. Um, uh, you know, it's nice that uh, uh, we pay our employees uh, generously, um, but we should also know, the public should also know just how much that generosity is costing us. So, thanks. Thank you. 
<sighs> Can I get a motion? I make a motion to approve the fiscal year 2021-2022 publicly available pay schedule for of all positions. Bill, before you take the vote, can I just give you one uh, piece of clarification? Because Stephen does bring up a good point in that every year we are required to report uh, total compensation of all employees to the state controller's office. Um, then they put that up on their website, and we actually have a direct link to our page. Well, the, our information on the state controller's website that can be found on our web page. So we do try to remain as transparent as we can with that. Once theirs is updated, our link is updated as well. Um, so somebody can go to our web page and link directly to this information located within the page. Thanks, Eric. You're welcome. Would you like to vote? I slightly. Board President Shea? Aye. Director Case? Aye. Director Kilkenny? Aye. Director Oysterman? Aye. And Director Ruggieri? Aye. Thank you. Uh, next up is District Manager Report. Uh, yeah, I have one quick update before I get into uh, just a very brief update on the park maintenance facility. Um, in this year's budget, uh, as well as next year's that we had as a carryover, was a replacement of the phone system in the community center and the fire station. Uh, we have rolled that over to the next fiscal year, but have had a couple of uh, challenges with the existing aging must-be-replaced system. So we've actually instigated that process kind of more by necessity. Uh, and we will have the phone systems replaced prior to the end of this month. So that expenditure will happen this year. We'll have a, a new uh, modern business phone system in here that people can actually hear from. It doesn't have a lot of buzzing in our ears. The voicemail works. Uh, it's also connected to the backup power in the fire station. So when the power goes out, because we actually have plain old telephone service and not voice over IP, uh, we actually keep our phones up and running, which is a huge benefit uh, because with the majority of voice over IP, if you lose internet connection, you also lose uh, uh, all phones. So we actually have a working phone even through the duration of a PSPS event when it's negated by PG&E. Um, that's important for us here, but it's especially important for firefighters who are living at the fire station and you know, want to check in with their families, cell towers go out, things like that. Uh, um, so to make a long story short, uh, that is going to happen within this fiscal year. Uh, even though it was approved as an item on a carryover item on next fiscal year, uh, it should all be done and paid for by the end of this month, so it won't actually appear on next fiscal year's budget. Uh, we're very happy to actually get a phone system that's going to work the way it should. Um, so I appreciate their patience with it. On June 30th is our anticipated date. We're getting notices out because we will be down um, phones uh, for probably a half a day while they're disassembling and pulling apart the old system and installing the new system and then installing all of the new uh, phones. Uh, all the voicemail boxes, all the extensions, and everything that go with it. So, staff uh, is aware, and we're giving plenty of notice to the families that'll have kids in our care, especially. Uh, and ideally, we'll have them work on getting the main line established as quickly as possible that day, and then worry about every other extension so we can have a, a working landline phone in addition to cell phones that we have access to. Uh, in terms of the park maintenance facility, uh, we are in contract. Work is progressing with Murray Building. They've been very good to work with. I'm very appreciative of their uh, cooperation. Uh, just today, we actually installed the security fencing. Um, and I'm happy to state that uh, during a face-to-face -face walkthrough with uh, the owner of Murray Building last week, uh, and looking at how that fence could go and what their needs were going to be from a safety and security standpoint, we were able to keep the entire length of uh, the Panhandle Trail open. Obviously, it's diverted, but you can walk from Miller Creek Road to Las Salinas Road uh, without hitting a dead end there at the very end. Um, it's not a super wide trail, and right now, considering they just did the work today, there's still some smoothing out and things that need to happen. Uh, they've also uh, begun by putting in the environmental protection pieces today, uh, which is just the uh, the waddles and the silt fencing along the creek bank. 
uh, basically for erosion concerns during construction to make sure that none of that goes down into the creek bank. Um, so that work has progressed. Uh, I'm happy that we were able to keep that open. That was always a goal. I just didn't know if it was going to be uh, practical and, uh, and realistic and safe to be able to do it. But the contractor has been uh, very understanding of this and says, no, we can make it happen inside of this and kept that open. And uh, we'll smooth out that path and put up some signage to make sure that people know that you can get around and keep walking that way. Uh, and access to the horseshoe pits will be will remain open throughout the duration as well. Um, so it, uh, it, it's a disturbance, but we're trying to make it as little as possible through um, construction. Uh, and if everything goes right with construction, which it rarely does, but we actually uh, are anticipating being able to finish this up, uh, this entire project, hopefully by the end of November. Awesome. Any questions? I'm sure all the gentlemen are so happy that the horseshoe pit will be open. Bill. They were quite pleased. Uh, any other comments? <laughs> okay. Any comments from the public? Yes, one second. Stephen. Yes, uh, thank you, Eric, for uh, making that walk path uh, possible. Uh, I think that's very important, and it's going to uh, make uh, this construction period a lot more palatable uh, for uh, the people that uh, use and love the park. Um, I would ask that you put a sign um, at the beginning of that path and at the end of the path please, to walk your bicycles because that is a very narrow path. It's a blind path um, and um, hopefully uh, what uh, improvements the contractors will make, maybe you could ask the contractors and say, look, we have people that um, use wheelchairs and, and walkers and all sorts of things. We really need to make sure that this is going to be a safe path um, also, the visibility is not going to be great in that area. I'm a little concerned about that. So, um, uh, and then of course you're going to be addressing the the erosion. That's that's good. So, so the bottom line ask is uh, walk your bikes in this area. Improve uh, the path to the point where you can can actually push a wheel uh, a wheelchair through that area. Um, that may uh, involve adding some gravel, I don't know. Um, and then just also, if we can improve the visibility somehow, I don't know, by uh, having holes in the fabric or something where, where people aren't going to just come around the corner and collide into one another, I think that would also improve it. But uh, anyhow, good work. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, just to follow up on that, uh, and Stephen does bring up a good point too. And obviously, uh, you know, this just went up today, and the signage. And I, I do think the, you know, just putting something asking people to walk their bikes is a good idea. It's narrow, it's curving. Um, we and we will put up some signage, uh, you know, well before both ends of it. We also pushed this out via social media today. Uh, just a notice of construction activity occurring uh, on our next door profile as well as on our Facebook profile, just to uh, try to make as many people aware as possible before they kind of come into it. So uh, we're certainly trying to get the word out. But the bottom line is, if they walk that path, they're going to figure it out real quick because it's 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 significantly changed. <laughs> Thanks, Eric. Yep. Okay, on to H. Chief, we're on to the fire department. Draft minutes of the fire commission meeting. Good evening, directors, district manager, manager Dreykison, Mr. Fretwell, and Mr. Nessel. Um, pleased to be here with you once again and provide you with another report. Uh, not a whole lot new from last week, but a couple of small updates. Um, <clears throat> I'll start with the Marin Wildfire Prevention Authority. Uh, just as a, a catch up, Executive Director Brown and 
The Board of Directors approved the 2021 work plan and the, excuse me, 2021-2022 work plan and annual budget. They did so a couple of weeks ago. The Advisory Technical Committee, Finance Committee, and Citizens Oversight Committee have all weighed in on the proposals, and there are roughly 111 proposals, totaling $18 million. Can, so can, I, can, I, can I interrupt you for one second? Absolutely. Um, we're on the minutes first, before we get to your report, the minutes from the Fire Commission uh, meeting. Oh, yeah, we haven't gone through the proper pro <laughs> haven't gone through the proper process for that yet, so I don't want to skip past that. Just no worries. Is that any comments or questions? I apologize, Chief. Thank you. Any comments, questions, comments from the public? No, sir. Oh, <laughs> never mind. Okay. One second. One second. I'm sorry. On the uh, fire commission minutes. One second, please. Uh, yeah, the minutes are obscure as usual. Um, I don't know why it's acceptable to any board members not to know what's going on uh, specifically uh, within these, these meetings. Um, there needs to be more descriptive information. Uh, I guess it's a lot easier to create uh, this uh, skeletal outline, but I don't think there's much point uh, uh, of even providing this if if there's no detail. That's all I have to say. Thank you, Stephen. Okay, Chief, I guess you you can resume. No <laughs> Sorry about that. But I just no, noticed we apologies. skipped that item, so I wanted to make sure we gave it its just due. You know, I didn't print out my agenda for today, so that's that's partly my fault. I should have been tracking, and then I would have saw it and caught it myself. So no worries. I was stating that the executive director of the MWPA and the board of directors approved the 21-22 work plan and annual budget a couple of weeks ago, and that the Finance Committee, Citizens Oversight Committee, and Advisory Technical Committee have, uh, have all had a chance to weigh in on the 111 proposals totaling approximately $18 million. Um, I gotta say this was a huge effort in from staff, uh, Quinn and the other prevention staff who weighed in to assist with the development of the projects, uh, District Manager Dry Coast Lane and others. Uh, we appreciate the opportunity to, to get a chance to um, develop projects that are meaningful and will help draw down risk and reduce vegetation and, and basically um, hazardous conditions within the community. So uh, with that, just want to remind everybody that the proposals come from three different buckets, the core allocation, the D space or defensible space and the local allocation. Uh, staff has already begun inspections roughly on May 7th. Uh, so they've been at it for about a month. Uh, at the time I received information, there was roughly 300 plus inspections that had taken place. I'm going to guesstimate that we're closer to double that amount by now. Uh, the great thing is they're working on a lot of different streets. And one of the commissioners last week uh, expressed a, or shared a question regarding one of the properties on um, Elbia Court. And with that, we followed up and basically uh, made a, a referral to the Marin County Community Development Agency and also are working directly with the property owner to try to improve the circumstances for that property and for the neighboring homes. Uh, and so with that, um, that individual ha has some fiscal challenges. So we're looking at uh, resources such as the AmeriCorps crews who have just arrived to possibly provide assistance along with perhaps some grant opportunities somewhere down the road to assist uh, the, the challenges that individual is experiencing and others who may be uh, in need of that support as well. So. Uh, AmeriCorps crews, I just mentioned they arrived. It's not part of this report, but there are eight individuals who um, come from a variety of cities uh, across the country, Bloomington, Illinois, uh, locations in Ohio, Kentucky, Florida, California, Oregon, and so uh, Missouri. So I just have to say it's really encouraging to see them here and show up and, and provide their voluntary efforts to um, help us draw down risk in our community. So when you see them out and about, uh, know that they're here doing exceptional work 
And the before and afters, like I told them today, are just really impressive. I, I'm, I'm really thrilled that they're here and are volunteering their time. Um, the drought. You know, we've got 1,000-hour fuels and 100-hour fuels that are far below their normal most moisture content. And even though right now we're experiencing, you know, less than uh, hot conditions, um, the drought continues. And we're hearing that this might be something that we have to contend with for months to come. So... That being said, um, encouraging all of our staff to do everything in their power to reduce water uh, consumption and, and start uh, exercising conservation measures. Um, we have devices uh, available to us from the San Rafael Fire Department where we can train and recapture water and recirculate it so that we're not wasting water when it comes to training, as an example. But it's going to be important moving forward that we really conserve and preserve that critical resource. PG&E on May 21st held a wildfire safety working session with stakeholders and outlined a variety of the things that they've been involved with uh, during the course of 2020 and also into 2021 that they believe uh, will actually reduce, substantially reduce the risk of wildfire in a variety of communities based on their lessons learned and also a new risk modeling, wildfire risk modeling um, system that they've got in place. And so uh, I've got to admit that you know, I was not really impressed with PG&E early on when they first started the PSPS, but I, I've seen a substantial and steady effort towards trying to reduce the effects of PSPS. And they've actually deployed um, some of the most impressive things I've seen of any agency now trying to get ahead of wildfire risk, uh, whether it become the 1300 weather stations they've deployed, 300 more which are planned for this year, six satellites, you know, they've got their in outer space now with their detection abilities, trying to see what's going on and, and perform some predictive and detection and alert um, activities. And that's impressive. Um, they've added 135 additional wildfire cameras in 2021. And then one specifically is going to be on San Rafael Hill. Uh, Jim Wickham and I went out about three weeks ago to, to walk the site and see what direction it was going to be able to point in and the, uh, the, the negotiations with Verizon on trying to ensure that they had the um, approval to use their cell tower to place the camera in. So I think that's going to be um, key. Sectionalizing devices that they've installed, the 100,000 miles of overhead power lines annually, and they have indicated that it's being inspected multiple times a year. I'll be more impressed when I hear about the thousands of miles they've replaced worth of overhead lines, but at least they're inspecting them right now. Um, and the last thing that I'll speak to is the new technology they're evaluating that helps determine or delineate between um, steam or smoke or fog and smoke. So that's going to be huge moving forward where you may have an indication that fire, you don't have a false alarm because you're actually using a, a, a modeling or a, a system that can tie in with HD cameras and be able to determine uh, one from the other. Uh, there's a bunch of helpful links that I included in the, the report. Uh, I think those are helpful to just kind of keep abreast of what's going on when a PSPS does occur, or if you just want some information on um, some of the things that they recommend in the way of preparing and or um, uh, having access for individuals that have medical or other vulnerabilities. There's a, a medical baseline uh, access point to provide information and provide updated information on maybe neighbors or family members that might have um, needs that PG&E can help assist with. COVID, Dr. Willis, the Marin County Health Officer, uh, a few weeks ago he stated that, that the case rates were down to the same numbers they were at roughly about a year ago. I don't know if that's really a good or a bad thing, I just know that um, we have one of the highest vaccination rates in the country. That to me is a good thing. In fact, it's a great thing because they said we had the highest vaccination rate in the country. And so if you think about that, um, that's a huge claim to be able to make for our county over every other county and or community in the country. I'm gonna assume that may actually expand beyond our borders, but I'm not gonna get overly exuberant on that, but I, I've got a feeling that that may actually be the case. And so um, that being said, at the time of this report, uh, a couple of weeks ago when I wrote this, it said about 60% of the population is now considered fully immune to COVID-19. I'm not sure how well that, that addresses the variants that I'm hearing about, but 
I even heard recently in London, apparently they're looking at continuing to lock down to some degree because of some of the variants they're experiencing there. So while, you know, I'm really optimistic about things, especially considering that we've moved into the yellow tier in Marin County, one of the few counties to be able to do that in the state. Uh, it's also, you know, reason for concern with variants potentially surfacing and becoming a problem. So far, we haven't heard of any real significant variants arriving in the U.S. and or spreading in the U.S. And so that's encouraging news as of right now. Um, mass vac vaccination sites and existing partnerships and relationships um, continue to be a, a factor in helping to vaccinate as many individuals as we can right now. Uh, at the time of this report, 8,000 out of 14,000 teens had been vaccinated. Uh, in children between the ages of 12 and 15. I'm not sure exactly when, but I, I've read recently that uh, Pfizer has been looking at ages five and up and they're working feverishly to try to make sure that they can get those vaccinations approved, hopefully by sometime late fall, so that now even more of the population and children can go to school um, as young as kindergartners who can go to school and feel safe and um, resume school with some sense of normalcy compared to what it was just probably at that point, roughly 18 months before. So really looking forward to that, especially for my own children. Um, currently though, Pfizer can, you can administer Pfizer vaccine to um, uh, youth age 12 to 15, provided they have a parent with them to help um, uh, confirm that they're eligible for the vaccine. And uh, with that, those numbers continue to climb. Uh, I'm, un, I'm of the understanding that the governor is looking to open up fully sometime around June 15th, but I heard that there still may be some restrictions in place. Uh, and that's in part because of the fact that there's still a great number of individuals who have yet to been vaccinated and they want to have some control over things in the event, you know, things take a, take a turn for uh, the worse or reverse um, the positive trend that we've had over the last uh, few months. And so um, but again, here in our county, we've got the lowest case counts, uh, less than two people per 100,000 over the last couple of weeks. And that's what enabled us to move into the yellow tier. And we are going to continue within the county to provide vaccinations at a variety of locations. Uh, some of them will be um, kind of like pop up or targeted uh, vaccination locations. But the large uh, locations such as the Marin Civic Center, those have all closed down. Um, there is additional data available regarding a visit at Vaccinated Marin if you want to see vaccination or excuse me, vaccine distribution information and in sites across the country. Last but not least, uh, we had a, a special event on Sunday. Uh, Director Kilkenny was in attendance, as was a council member from um, uh, San Rafael and uh, staff from the Marin County Reserve, or excuse me, Medical Reserve Corps. Uh, the Engine uh, 58 crew were there and others who actually participated in a CPR, hands-only CPR training and Stop the Bleed. Uh, very good turnout. I'm going to have a photo and other information I'll share in next month's report regarding uh, that event. It was a beautiful morning. Uh, a lot of inspired and, and motivated individuals got right down there on their hands and knees and started doing hands-only CPR and had a chance to listen to the Bee Gees and some other good music uh, while they were learning how to do hands-only CPR at the right pace. Uh, and with that, um, there was a second session at 11. I had to leave, so I was not able to attend the second session, but I'm, assume, I'm hearing that there was a pretty good turnout for that session as well. So um, nice. hats off. I'm sorry. There was. Okay, that's great. Mm -hmm. So my hats go off to the Marinwood neighbors, the nurses, uh, the Marin County EMS Agency, and the Marin Health Medical Center trauma program staff and the volunteers who were there to really um, turn out to make that a positive experience for those who were there. And um, we told Carrie that, you know, we certainly think there'd be room for more of these, um, given the, uh, the, the community's appetite for it. So we look forward to some more future events such as this. And I'm actually going to try to migrate these towards San Rafael as well. So I think it was a successful event. If Council Member or Director Kilkenny, if you'd like to add something, that'd be great. 
Um, I'd love to add that it was people around San Rafael, Novato, around Marin, not just Marinwood residents, but the word got spread. So there was a woman <laughs> from Santa Venetia that came because her husband has health issues. Um, so there's a lot of people around who came and are now asking for one in Corte Madera or Larkspur. So it was really good. Um, and the woman who started is actually my next door neighbor. So I didn't have a choice to be there. So good job, Molly Wagner. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Was that the same woman I was speaking with? That the one in the scrubs? Yeah. Yes. No, 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 not Molly. The, uh, the individual oh, with, yeah, the yeah, yeah. with the almond. I yes. see. Okay. I didn't realize she came from another city. I thought she was in Marinwood. Okay. No, she's Santa Venetia. Yes. Oh, it looks like, Savannah, yes. Jen? Can you, you're, you're muted. I had a quick question. Well, I had my hand up and there's yes. still some kids running around, so I'm on mute. My stepfather may have taken my kids to two different ice cream shops today. Just saying. Oh, nice. Um, <laughs> quick question about the cleanup. So I saw them working on uh, Las Colinas and they did an amazing job. And they pulled out all of that tinder. Who goes through after they do the pullout and does the cleanup? Well, this area was a Mount Marin area, so it's not a Marin wood. But I'm just wondering, do we have, do they have a person to contact in various areas? Because they cleaned it out, it looked amazing, but then you could see all the old beer bottles and beer cans that people have apparently been throwing underneath those tinder i'm gonna Probably guess too. that it may be marin county that i need to reach out to to figure out if they're actually responsible for having someone come in and do uh, debris removal yeah um yeah i couldn't see our, our staff leaving something there unless it was no, they didn't this. they they cleaned up everything they cut mm -hmm. but i don't i think that they had like green waste and i'm talking about like trash trash that Teenagers right. throw underneath bushes to hide the evidence of them drinking. Yeah, that's that's a great question. You know, I haven't heard of this issue in the past, so I'll, I'll certainly circle back to, to staff tomorrow and find out what they can share with me, and I'll, I'll send you an okay. email. All right. um, I'll, I haven't it's in the Mount Marin that area in a couple of days, but I'll check and then I'll ping you if it's picked up. If not, then I just won't say anything. Okay, no worries. Anybody uh, else? Yeah, Chief, uh, can I follow up? Uh, one of the things that Chief and I, and uh, you know, even more so with Quinn Gardner, the emergency manager, talking about a little bit, um, and in parallel with what he was talking about, the Marin wildfire, and then the uh, and, uh, home inspections that fall under the D-space funding that the district re uh, receives, uh, we tried to time that out well with the chipper days, obviously. Um, this chipper day was a little tough because it was a day immediately following a holiday weekend, so they didn't get huge participation. Uh, they did reach out to see if we had any other things since they would be out here anyway as a district to have them do. Unfortunately, we just did a big, uh, a big haul of some debris uh, literally a day or two before they let us know that uh, there's still some availability, even though we try to push that out. Um, but on the D space, the one thing that uh, he was talking about, as we're going through this and we're going through a full year of this, and I think we'll have a better understanding of uh, what our, our plans now are they're actually going to wind up costing, uh, I think it's safe to say that uh, we'll have additional D space funds available, defensible space funds available. Um, and one of the things we've been talking about is, you know, potentially looking at some sort of a grant opportunity um, that we could also present uh, to, you know, low income or senior residents or people who, uh, for whatever reason, have challenges following the recommendations, even though they might have all of the intention and want to follow the recommendations by the residential home inspectors. They don't have means by which to even remove the stuff, even if we can get it chipped away and hauled for free for them. Uh, so one of the things we've been talking about and a lot of the other MWPA agencies are, are instituting is like some level of a grant program or a qualifying program where, you know, people who meet, you know, certain income thresholds or whatever, whatever thresholds we might be able to come up with, uh, we would have, say, 
$10,000 available per year specifically. I'm just using a round number specifically from the defensible space funds to help uh, residents who aren't capable otherwise of just having the vegetation removed um, that, you know, we could do maybe some level of a matching grant or something. So that's something the that chief and Quinn and I are certainly going to talk more about and probably take back to the commission level to refine a little bit and potentially bring something to the board because ultimately if we started doing that, um, it would come for a final board approval at some point. But I think as we start to understand what our current plans are going to, you know, truly cost us in the end, um, we'll have a better scope of, okay, uh, here's what level of funds we might be able to dedicate towards such a program, which I do think is a very worthy program. So I just wanted to throw that in there and thank the chief and Quinn uh, for keep kind of asking me about it because I, I think it's uh, it's exactly what these funds are intended to do is is help provide defensible space for residents. Awesome. Any more comments? Comments from the public? Yes, one second. Uh, hey, my uh, yes. Uh, great report again, uh, Chief. Um, you might not be aware of this, but every year we have a, a pancake uh, uh, breakfast on uh, 4th of July. You didn't mention it, so I assume it's not happening. Um, and so that's just one. Uh, actually, I'd like you to respond to that. Or what was decided on the pancake breakfast? Yeah, we, we decided that still, given the pandemic and given the timing and the lack of ability to prepare for something on that scale, that we're probably going to look to push it to 2022. All right. So the other thing I, I wanted to say is, you know, you do good work and you present well and you present the department well. And um, I sure wish uh, that uh, the fire commissioners weren't so camera shy that we could actually have those uh, publicized on YouTube for the public to see. I don't see that it really benefits anyone uh, for you guys to operate behind closed doors when uh, the support uh, for your department could be greater, and I would hope that you would advocate uh, for that uh, with the board. Um, that's all I have to say. Good work. Continue. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments, Eric? Have we got anybody else out there? No, sir. Okay. Thank you, Chief. Really appreciate it. Uh, the day of the next fire commission meeting is August 3rd. On to park and recreation. Draft minutes of the Park and Recreation Commission meeting. Review. Any questions? Comments? Um, I, I've got a question on item number five, play structures replacement projects. Um, it says commission discussed projects. Can I get a little more detailed than that? Uh, yeah, well, that was why I put in a couple extra sentences there, too, on the Commissioner Fine presented a draft community survey um, that we're putting together that'll be launched out to the public to get some basic feedback on uh, the project in general. Uh, <clears throat> and Commissioner Shawson presented some initial findings on some playground structure uh, replacement options. Uh, it was actually a very good conversation. Uh, Lisa was also in attendance of that meeting, uh, you know, just as a, a, a point of reminder, both commissions do have board liaisons who are very committed and do attend every uh, commission meeting. So the, the board is represented at every commission meeting and is aware of what is happening there. So I just uh, to put that out there. And then uh, 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 Commissioner Shawson had done a lot of work kind of speaking with multiple uh, multiple playground companies who kind of threw a lot of options or even one that kind of sketched together some potential designs of some of the uh, uh, more popular options. Luke put in a lot of work ahead of time and kind of measured off the sites within our fenced in playground area uh, intended for the play structure equipment um, 
And then one of the other kind of key takeaways was not only thinking about just the equipment, but how well the equipment does kind of blend in with what is a very unique playground park setting with all of the oak trees and the creek bank right there and a very kind of woodsy feeling as opposed to some of the stuff that we were looking at um, seemed a little bit more urban park in nature uh, or parks kind of, you know, in the middle of a wide open park as opposed to enclosed. So that's certainly some of the things that we are looking at. Um, we all left with a little bit of homework to bring to the next commission um, in terms of, you know, kind of keeping this project pushing and moving along. Um, we'll uh, hopefully be able to finalize this uh, survey soon enough and get that out to the public, not only to get their opinions on things, but also to drive uh, interest and excitement for the project as well. Uh, because I do think that there's going to be a lot of excitement about this as the word continues to uh, get out there. Uh, we still have, you know, quite a long timeline on, on this, but it, it's moving good. The commission is very excited about it. I, you know, we talked about it for quite a while. They had a lot of good thoughts about it. Um, I don't know if Director Ruggieri has anything else she'd like to add. And you covered it. Thank you, Eric, um, quite well. I think that there were a lot of incredible ideas that were brought to that meeting. Um, and it was exciting to just to see the different options that we could consider. Um, so I think we are definitely headed in, in the right direction. And I was also um, very pleased to, to see that we do have a, a survey that's going to be going out, um, detailed a couple of, of different ways that it'll be getting out into the community, um, as well as some signs that we'll be posting that they'll kind of direct people to the survey. So, um, so that, the input of the community can also be considered. Um, so yes, I was, I was definitely, um, I was definitely pleased with, with with what I saw, and I'm excited for what's to come there. Cool, cool. Is it is it, uh, is it possible? Just because I think I agree with you guys. I think this is going to be like one of the big things. Is it possible to uh, like? I don't know what you guys were looking at, and I can't make those meetings. Um, is it possible to like get links to some of the stuff that you guys were looking at or as they move forward to link things in just so that we have a better sense of such an important project in the neighborhood? Yeah, I definitely think that's possible. Uh, I would be a little, uh, I think that this wasn't necessarily things that we were necessarily looking at. It just gave us some ideas within our budget and within our space um, and it actually helped refine a little bit more of a, a, a broader vision of that area that said, you know, again, a lot of these were kind of those big, loud, bright color things, uh, you know, and there are some talks about different types of uh, elements that go into your typical play structures and playgrounds. Um, and then, uh, you know, like I said, I, I thought it also lended itself to, as you were looking at this stuff, which all looked, you know, like fantastic equipment. Um, so more so than other parts, it reminded us too, and that uh, how it blends in and fits into the environment there. You know, the color schemes, the type of equipment, um, what it's made of, everything else is uh, equally as important as what the equipment itself is, because it, it really is a unique playground. Uh, and we don't, uh, by any stretch, want to lose that character and that feeling and just kind of turn it into a more urban looking playground because it's, it's really not. And I think it's what's unique. And it's a, this is an opportunity that we're not going to have again for several years. So let's make sure we get something that everybody feels good about, looks good. Uh, and most importantly, the kids who use it are going to enjoy it for years. Cool. Well, and the big thing is, is correct me if I'm wrong, a lot of playgrounds, they have ideas that they put on their website, but it's modular. So like, if you just give links to various things, that's not necessarily the one that we will do. Because yeah. I know I we can add, subtract, and change because they're more modular in nature and like what you want for your area, correct? So it's not yeah. like a plug and, it's not like a, like you plug and play. I, I would defer to Luke and ask him to answer some of this. My, my gut instinct says it's not quite like a, a Lego set where you can just start adding more pieces to it. Uh, I mean, these things need to it be It was just more of a response and, to Chris wanting like websites to look at that I just, we all I, want to I, it, but I think as we start to refine and figure out exactly what the procurement <laughs> process is going to look like, we're certainly going to make yeah. all of that very public, very open. Right. 
uh, want as much community involvement as possible. The commission's again, very excited about this. And as it hikes up the ladder, uh, eventually towards the board on some of the approvals that the board's gonna have to make. Um, obviously there's where outreach and input is, is a, a key critical factor and you can't get that unless you can start giving people some ideas. And so now we're just trying to refine. Right. This was really our, our first real scoping session on gotcha. you know, what's possible. Uh, okay, Luke, cool. anything else there? Um, no, I'm just, just the only thing I would add is that, um, in going through the measurements of the play, uh, the playground and looking at the size of the structures that we do have, um, it became clear to me that we actually have a play structure or a couple different play structures, um, that are really maximizing the, the space that we have in an, in an efficient manner. And, we are limited by um, the perimeter that we have and the fence and the creek and the, the sort of playground setting that we have has determined like what goes there. And so uh, without remodeling the entire playground um, from the ground up, um, there are some limitations on what we can change out there. And the structure that we do have, I, I think um, it's become it's like, is a decent model for uh, moving forward. And so, um, it actually is a, a good use of the space. And so whatever we end up doing um, is going to have to fit in. And there's a lot of different uh, regulations on how far uh, different height equipment can be from the fence and from other structures. And, um, and so uh, I think that the, you know, there are some limitations in place. And I think we did discuss that a little bit at the meeting that was helpful. Um, but moving forward, it's not, it's not sky's the limit. And um, we just want to make sure that we, we temper you know, expectations moving forward. We're not remodeling the entire playground. It's more um, looking at how we can replace the existing structures with something that will provide a similar uh, experience for the kids, but be something that's more modern and that we can um, do, do better maintenance on and keep up for, for years to come. So um, hopefully that came, I think that came across in the meeting and that's something that we just want to keep in the, in, in the mindset moving forward. Cool. Is, is the goal still to have two separate ones? and to utilize that and maximize two separate ones or have one big, you know, I don't know. I don't think we, we didn't really um, get down to specifics of exactly what, what the end result was going to be at this point where that's, that's, I think still um, off in the future, but um, I mean, there's, there's definitely okay. some flex flexibility there. Thanks. Yeah. What I would say is the goal is to maximize the space and the funding available for the project too. Um, and given what the funding is and what our match is, figuring out if uh, we want to go above and beyond that, what does that mean? Or is there other avenues we want to try to pursue additional funding for it? Uh, but I think the, the key constraint to what Luke said is just the available space. And as we start to go more into the procurement process, um, you know, these representatives are actually very helpful because, you know, a big part of what they do is, you know, help us help the imagineering part of putting a play. Out of what our space and loop, you know, kind of created this uh, uh, fairly simple yet incredibly effective sketch of what the thing was that included all the measurements and showed everything. So we were able to start some of that initial conversation. So I think that really helped everybody take off and start to visualize from a better perspective too. So whether it's two distinct playground areas, I don't know, but it will certainly, uh, we want to maximize all of the space that we can without overcrowding. Uh, what is sure. the, the, the set perimeter of the area. I agree. Would you agree with that, Luke? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. My, my only other question, noting that two, uh, two of the members of the park and rec were asking about the horn trail in Blackstone. Is that the main trail that comes up from um, what is it like Valley Stone or whatever? What, what Correct. Okay. You got it. Yeah. Yeah. And just an update on that trail. Um, you know, pre COVID days, we were able to get out and actually see places uh, and do meetings off site in some of those areas. We haven't been able to do that for a while. They, uh, you know, that trail has gotten a lot of increased usage. Um, you know, wanting to know kind of what, uh, what impact that has had uh, so on and so forth. So that's something we'll be putting together for them as well. Great. Thank you. Any other comments? Those are good questions. Thank you. You ready for public comment, Bill? Ready. Okay.
Hello. Um, yes, uh, so uh, that was an interesting conversation. It kind of morphed from just discussing the agenda to uh, additional subjects. Um, but I did want to point out that, you know, it really, uh, this, it, it was a very interesting meeting. I also attended, um, uh, and there was a lot of discussion. There were a lot of images, and uh, without a more narrative approach to reporting, it really is impossible for anyone to know what's going on. Uh, also, um, we're record. I don't know why we we don't record and publish these meetings. Uh, uh, once again, doing it behind closed doors really does not serve the public's interest. Um, there will be a lot of ideas uh, thrown out on this project, and uh, you know, uh, let's 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 get them out there so you guys know what's going on. Um, my and I'm going to make some comments like you guys made on. Uh, on the presentation, um, the uh, I was kind of excited. I was also kind of disappointed at what we saw. Um, if we simply replace what we have, which is the most practical uh, uh, way of doing things, because we're we're limited in scope of what what can be in those areas, I don't think we've gained much. And when I looked at the uh, play structures, I asked myself, well, I can see that there's been a lack of maintenance, but I don't see why we can't restore what we have right now and use the, those considerable funds for other projects, such as a turf slide, a, a slide that would be uh, in, in, in an embankment. Uh, such as, uh, you know, play structures, uh, uh, fantasy play structures uh, where kids can pretend that they're Miwok Indians or whatever. Um, we, could, we could create these in different sections of the park. But the real thing that I think we ought to consider is converting our, um, our wading pool into a uh, splash pad. And I don't know what the terms of this the, this money is, but I think we really should be spending the majority of the money on a project like that uh, that will serve more of our community. So I'm for more play structures and better maintained uh, play structures that we already have. I believe that we can, you know, replace faded PVC if that's what's needed to make it look fresh, but. The designs that we saw really aren't much different than what we have right now, so I just don't think it's worth ripping out our old ones and putting in a, a fresh one. Let's just restore what we have. Um, I'll have more comments later, but that's it. Thank you, Stephen. If that's all there is, shall we move on to the Park and Rec Activity Report? Sounds good. Uh, thank you, Bill. Thanks, everyone. Um, so the main things going on in the rec department uh, right now is um, summer camp and our summer programming uh, starts on Monday. So we're in the final days of, of preparation um, for, for camp and, and for uh, what's going on at the pool starting on Monday. Uh, we've got a lot of staff trainings going on this week. Um, as you all know, uh, safety is our number one priority um, with our, our rec programs. And so we take our staff trainings very seriously to make sure that all of our um, crew that comes in the summer uh, knows what the expectations are and know what the protocols are for any given um, you know, emergency uh, in any given scenario and how to um, act appropriately uh, while they're working here. So. Um, we have a, a lot of different trainings we go through on the weeks leading up to, to camp and into the summer for the pool. And that's all been going very well. It's been great to get to know the new hires and get to see the returning staff again. Um, last year being kind of a, a very scaled back summer for us due to COVID. Um, we had a, a very uh, skeleton crew last year. So it's been good to see a lot of people returning uh, this summer and we're very excited to be able to operate 
on a slightly more normal, um, normal level. So preparation has been going well and, and things are all in place uh, for us to start on Monday uh, with, our, with our summer programming. Um, and, and things are um, looking to be a very, uh, this is gonna be a very good summer. So that's been um, very busy and, uh, but, uh, but going smoothly. The, um, the pool is, is transitioning to the summer schedule on Monday. Um, we've been currently operating with uh, lap swim, recreation swim, and top pool reservations. Everything has to be by reservation. And we're continuing that for the time being um, into July, but hoping that uh, after we hear what um, revised guidance might come through this upcoming Tuesday, um, we're leaving ourselves open to be able to transition some of our um, programs to a more standard like drop-in status, uh, especially for recreation swim on the weekend. So we're waiting to hear about that so we can, um, and we're, we're ready to pivot if, if um, we're able to do that. Um, but we've been getting um, the sense that there may still be some restrictions in place. So we're kind of um, uh, waiting to, to hear about that to, to make any final decisions. But um, all of our lap swim, recreation swim um, reservations have been filling up. Our swim lessons have been completely full and we've been adding time slots as we can and, and trying to get as many people in off the waiting list as we can. So um, we're still working on that and um, it's been great to have uh, a large demand, but we're just trying our best to meet uh, as many uh, as much of that demand as we can. So uh, working on that, we were, we were really excited to be able to resurrect the GIT, the lifeguards in training program that we offer to middle school age kids. Um, and we'll be running three sessions of that this summer on uh, which we were not able to run last year. So um, that is almost full uh, for the three sessions and we're, we're looking forward to um, bringing that in. That's a great program that's a good opportunity for that age group to, to get uh, experience learning what it's like to be a lifeguard, learning a lot of lifeguarding and CPR skills, getting to um, uh, work with our staff during trainings and uh, help with our swim lesson program. And it's a great feeder program for our uh, lifeguard staff. And we've had, um, I would say at this point, probably over half our staff, uh, the current staff were once in the, in the guards and training program. And so that's been a, a great program to kind of usher in the, the next generation um, each year. So, um, Sivan, did you have a question? What about the kids who wanted to do it last year and couldn't do it? Are they, did you guys increase the age so that, like, the guys that were 14 last year, like the gals and the girls? Um, we now. didn't, we didn't increase the age because the ones that age out of GIT actually become eligible to get actual, uh, paid positions on the pool staff. So they tend to transition to, to, um, applying to, to be lifeguards and pool attendants and swim instructors once they're too old for GIT. So, uh, we didn't see a need to, to increase the age for that. Um, if there's a 15 year old that wanted to stay in GIT, we, we would make an exception for that, but that tends not to be the case, but good question. Um, uh, we've got a lot to do the next few days and, and there's um, both Robin and John Paul are running a large uh, pre-summer staff trainings this weekend uh, just to get everybody on the same page and make sure everyone's um, knows what to do so that'll be great but then come Monday I think we're, we're ready to go and we're, we're looking forward to that um, on the uh, parks maintenance side, um, similar preparation is going on for the increased foot traffic and, and usage of our parks and playgrounds this summer and pool. Um, uh, we're making a big push to try to get the turf uh, fortified and, and in good shape before uh, all the hundreds of feet are running all over it this summer. And um, so we're doing a last, a last minute push to get, to get that as good as it can get. Um, getting things cleaned up uh, and the landscaping around the community center. We added some shade on the patio outside the reception hall uh, to provide additional places for the, for the camp kids to be this summer. Um, since we're trying to keep, in spite of guidelines getting relaxed, we're still um, required to keep everybody as, as separated as we can. And, and there's still some guidelines in place for summer camps. And so, uh, we're doing our best to keep everybody separated and give them as many places as they can be in the shade this summer. And so um, adding some shade sales will help that. Um, a couple other uh, pieces of, of news for the uh, parks maintenance side. We did just get new uh, touchless sensor activated fixtures in the community center bathroom for the sinks and the urinals. 
um, which is great. Just um, a little bit more sanitary uh, uh, fixtures for that. And it'll help us cut down on, on water waste and um, keep things a little bit cleaner and safer. So those just went in last week, which we're really excited about. It's all working great. And um, it's been a nice addition to the bathrooms. Um, one piece of uh, slightly not as good news is the there was some uh, new vandalism on the mini park playground structure, uh, something that we've seen before. Um, somebody broke a couple of the elevated um, climbing structures of the platforms um, up there and they were rendered unsafe, um, broken down the middle. So that area is closed off right now. We have ordered replacement platforms for those play structure or that play structure at the mini park and we'll install that as soon as we have it on hand. We're hoping that comes um, in the next couple of weeks, uh, but I don't have the exact date on that yet, but we'll keep you posted as we know more about when we'll have that um, playground open up as normal. So that's unfortunate, but um, we'll we get that fixed as soon as possible. So, um, that's all I wanted to really highlight in my report, um, but please let me know if you have any questions about that or anything else I've listed or wrote about. Can I say thank you for all the hard work and all the extra time for getting everything organized and whole stuff's been running smoothly in terms of registering and people, and I'm off wait list. I know other people are off wait list and they're all excited. So. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Music in the park is out of the question, I suppose. Um, we don't have any uh, <clears throat> official plans for a summer concert series this summer, but um, depending on, on what we, you know, what can, this next Tuesday is gonna be very instructive in terms of what, what Marin okay. is imposing on, and far, as far as what we can do with events and things, we, we really don't know exactly what, what's gonna be in place. Um, with with the new relaxing of guidelines, but um, depending on what they say, we we you know we may try to put something together uh, before the end of summer, and we'll, we'll definitely keep you posted. I'm not ruling anything out, but we don't we do not have a music series planned at this time. Okay, well the, I know there's some bands that are itching to they'll play anywhere. <laughs> I get I get the emails from them. I'm uh, yeah, well, I've, got, I've got them on the list. So <laughs> hey, can we get some awesome bands for cheap now? Well, for what? For cheap. Awesome. Oh, for cheap, yeah, for cheap. of course, of course. Um, will we be, this is just a kind of parent hat, will we be getting a letter this week on whether our kids have to wear masks or not or what the restrictions are within camp? We will be putting out um, a final, uh, that's a good question, Kathleen. We'll be putting out um, a letter to parents or an email to parents um, with the, the, the current guidance, but since camp is starting before we receive you know the, the big update <laughs> exactly uh, we're going to be letting everyone know that um the guidelines are subject to change and we will indicate sort of what we will what we're we'll doing you know in, in in terms of uh depending on what, those, what that guidance is you know we will we will be updating our guidance and, and we may relax um our our protocols uh in accordance with what they say so. Okay. But right now, everybody's wearing masks, whether or not. Yeah, the, the summer camp guidance has good. not changed. And so um, as of right now, everyone's, everyone's wearing masks, but they, there are some conflicting pieces of information um, on the, the county's um, site. And, and, you know, so there's a few things we're trying to get clarified, and we, we should know by the end of this week um, what to expect come Tuesday and we will let everyone know, um, you know, sort of what, what to expect and, and, but there will be a sort of to be announced, um, aspect of that. And we will let everyone know as soon as we know more. Thank you. Perfect. Anything else? Any more comments? Comments from the public? One second. Hey, Mike. Steven. Steven. Yes, uh, so I want to go back to the play structures. Uh, first of all, um, as far as the ideas for the play structures, I, I do have a, uh, what I think is a pretty good idea to get solicit comments from the public. I think uh, you should open up a Pinterest page. I don't know if uh, you all know what that is, but basically it's a, it's a database of ideas. Um, 
and the community can post ideas, what, you know, the cool um, play structures that they see that they'd like to see in Marinwood, and it'd be a good way of communication uh, with everybody, including each one of you. Um, as far as the uh, damage uh, to our mini park, this seems to happen every couple years and it happens in the same location um, on those platforms where they get broken and it seems to me what's, what the real issue is is there's an engineering flaw and uh, there's no way that kids, even a bunch of older kids jumping up and down, uh, should be able to break these platforms. I suggest instead of buying replacements which may degrade in the uh, sun, uh, uh, plastic replacements, that you replace it with uh, dug fur, uh, uh, a, a very robust dug fur uh, substitute that will withstand weather and uh, treatment and will be way above whatever engineering standards the plastic has. Um, you'll, you'll save money over time and it'll be safer. Uh, with regards to the pool, um, still there's been no uh, movement to, for relief for lap swimmers. It came to my attention that rec swimmers, you can have six rec swimmers for $32 for two hours. And for me as a lap swimmer, for me and my wife, I guess I'd, I'd be paying $22 for 45 minutes or 50 minutes of lap swimming. I, I mean, it's just unreal. You, for, for, for me, it, basically what has happened is you've changed us into a private club. And while I'm glad that people are taking uh, the opportunity to swim in our pool, I'm pretty pissed as a taxpayer to be subsidizing this and not have uh, fair access uh, with the same kind of uh, treatment that other uh, categories as swimmers are, are treated. I mean, we're just, and, and the idea of switching to a punch pass doesn't really provide us re with relief. We want uh, our annual memberships, we want them to be fair and uh, reflect, uh, uh, reflect the fact that we as taxpayers uh, are underwriting that, uh, everybody's salaries and, and all that equipment. Um, Thank you, Stephen. Always. Just to clarify, it's four people for 32, it's four people for your payment of $30, and then you can add an additional two people for more money. Um, yeah, so a Rexham reservation uh, for a resident is $32 for up to four people. Um, sometimes that's a two-person reservation for $32. Um, it's, it's the minimum is $32. And, they, and those additional one or two people have to pay an additional $8 each. So, and there's nothing um, preventing people from lapsing for those two hours if they would like to lap swim in that lane that there is there. Um, the lanes are not set up. Uh, there's one lane, uh, right? That we do, um, that you guys do swim tests and stuff. Can that be used for somebody who wants to Right. Swim? No, uh, we typically do not have an, an opportunity to do full lap swim during the recreation hours. I'm just saying, like, okay. I mean, like, people are welcome to swim back and forth if they, if they want during that time, but that's, it's not set up in the controlled environment that lap swim is during our rec swim hours. Okay. But there is a possibility of going for two hours for $30. Uh, for $32, up, yeah, to, uh, anywhere up to four people can swim for two hours. That's correct. Any other comments? Then I would say the date of the next Park and Recreation Commission meeting is June 22nd. Number J. Actually, it's not a number, letter J. <laughs> Board member items of interest, requests for future agenda items. 
Anybody. Eric, do we go out? Uh, yep, one second. Stephen. You know, once again, I brought up uh, the points of accessibility and fairness to uh, the full range of our community members. And, you know, it's, I, I'm, I reach with, you, you respond with silence. I don't know what it's going to take uh, for the board to take uh, accept their accessibility responsibilities seriously. It may take a lawsuit, I'm, I'm afraid. Um, I was really kind of appalled finding that our, our uh, play structures are not considered accessible. And that should be one of the first things that we're talking about. I also talked about the path. I also talked about the slope entrance to the park. I talked about, uh, the, actually a lot of lap swimmers have, are lap swimmers because of accessibility needs. Um, let's get serious in future meetings about uh, about accessibility in Marinwood Park and make that part of our core responsibilities, which it is by law. Um, you know, one of these days, we're all, age and infirmity gets us all. You may be the person in a wheelchair uh, with an unexpected illness, and your mobility uh, may be severely limited. So you're not just doing this for other people. You're doing it for yourself. You're doing it for your neighbor. You're doing it for your mom and your dad. And you're doing it for future generations to come. So um, I ask you the next, very next meeting to uh, address these issues. I particularly ask that uh, the entrance, the quiet wood path entrance, get a ramp into it. It's not hard to do. You do basically a retaining wall and some dirt um, and that's that's really all I guess I have to say um, uh, I think uh, in the future uh, I'd love to discuss this uh, uh, either in person or offline uh, but uh, I am accessible and I don't meander when I actually have a conversation thank you Thank you, Stephen. Uh, the date of the next regular board meeting is going to be July 13th. Then I'm on to K. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? I move to adjourn. A second. Second. I have a second and a third. Okay. Board Member Shea. Aye. Aye. Director Case. Director Kilkenny. Aye. Director Oysterman. Aye. And Director Ruggieri. Aye. Thanks. Thank you all. Have a great Thank night. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Bye. everybody. Have a nice evening. Bye. You too. <sighs>